Uh, hello, my name is uh, Stuart McDonald. I'm a local historian and a volunteer at Scarborough Maritime Heritage Centre. Uh, and we've just put up a, an exhibition on Scottish herring girls, sometimes known as um, herring lasses. Um, and the herring lasses have sometimes been overlooked by people that are interested in maritime history. So we're trying to uh, put a bit of a spotlight on the role of the herring girls. Um, the herring industry was a huge uh, industry in the 19th century. Um, and the herring girls were a very important part of that industry. It was a very important for British exports. Britain was exporting herring uh, all over Europe and to the United States. And the herring girls played a critical role in gutting, packing and curing, preserving the herring. Uh, but the interesting thing is these herring girls, um, they were sort of a migratory workforce. They came from the very poorest parts of the north of Scotland. They came from uh, Shetland, Orkney, the Northwest Highlands, the Hebridean Islands. Many of them didn't speak English as their first language. And they came all the way down to Scarborough and further on um, to Lowestoft and other resorts in Norf Norfolk. Uh, and they, many of them were Gaelic speak, Scottish Gaelic speaking. They didn't understand English that well. Some of them picked up sort of um, Yorkshire accents when they took their English back to their crofting townships in the north of Scotland. But they were very, um, very feisty women. They came down in large numbers. They came down on trains. Um, they knew a lot of the fishermen that were coming down with the Scottish fishing boats as well. So there were familiar faces when they arrived in towns like Scarborough. Um, but they were mostly very religious. They were very hardworking, very law-abiding. And they seemed to have been great fun as well. So when you see photographs of them in the exhibition, they're very often they're laughing, they're smiling, they might be singing. Any free moments they had, they often would be knitting um, and they'd be using their time usefully so they could take back knitted um, goods to their families back in Scotland. So they, were, um, they had a big uh, impact in resorts like Scarborough. They attracted a lot of attention uh, on the piers of Scarborough as they were sort of... Um, um, as they were gutting fish and um, preserving the fish. So there'd be large crowds of holidaymakers would come and watch them at work. Some of the herring girls worked at phenomenal speeds. They would be sort of gutting a fish in more or less one second. They would gut the fish and put it in an appropriate bin for the size of that fish. So they could do sort of four dozen in a minute, quite comfortably, some of them. Um, they, so they attracted a lot of attention. Um, some of them, of course, met um, people in Scarborough. They married into Scarborough families. They became friendly with Scarborough families. And then they'd take, uh, when they went back home, they'd have the address of the Scarborough families and they'd keep in touch with Scarborough. They'd take souvenirs back. So if you go to sort of um, cottages in the highlands of Scotland at that, in the 19th, early 20th century, you might find they'd have little souvenirs of Scarborough on the mantelpiece. Um, so they're a big part of the Scarborough um, fishing heritage and fishing industry in the 19th and early 20th century. So the, uh, the Herring Girls exhibition at the Scarborough Maritime Heritage Centre is, uh, is a free exhibition and it's on from um, the beginning of May 23 right through till the end of August. <laughs>